All right, so welcome into the live stream. Today we are going to do something fun. And the fun part is we're going to take you up the line to a milli. That's right. We're going to give you a model of how you can take your portfolio from 100K to 1 million. If you want to move that down from 10K to 100,000 or from 1K to 10,000, whichever route you want to take. The point is, is that we're looking at a lot of projects today to kind of give you one, the run up that we've experienced here within the network, but also some of the inside around this. Now, part of this will be, you know, somewhat of an alliance or a, a, an analysis, and also some of it will be giving you some direction to kind of jump in today. But welcome back to TechPath. Today, we're going to dive into my, one of my portfolios and kind of where all that's going to be coming from. Let's get a lower third there. <laughs> and uh, there you go. All right. So my portfolio, as you guys, many people ask me, what do you, what do you invest in, in Paul? I'm going to reveal some of that to you today and kind of where it's come from, what, how it's performing, and maybe where I'm going to exit. And on this, I'll also drop in a couple other uh, projects that you should most likely are already tracking. And of course, we're going to have uh, comments and questions. So if you guys are, of course, here in the chat right now, Give us some comments and give us some questions over there. If you have something really important, you got to hit the super chat, man. We'll try to elevate you right up and get that uh, question answered for you. Before we get started, though, I want to jump over to trade the chain. Take a look at kind of where some of the movers are right now. And if you look at where the market cap setting at a little over two trillion, so we've kind of had a pretty good adjustment here in the last 24 to 36 hours. Things have kind of started to move back up. Daily average sentiment is still a little bit neutral overall. And then you've got bent, uh, Bitcoin sentiment setting in at a neutral at 51, which is, you know, in, in light trading days, that's pretty normal. And it's not anything to be, you know, kind of concerned about. It's, a, it's kind of a scenario, scenario I like. And of course, Ethereum is the one I'm a little bit concerned about, really. Uh, and that is that it's holding a 41 uh, neutral sentiment also. Um, but one that definitely has the potential to kind of move on. And then, of course, you kind of see the, the hottest on Twitter and also the top price gainers here. Remember, make sure and in the comment or in the description below, you've got to get to our Trade the Chain link there because we do get a little bit of uh, kickback from Trade the Chain. So it's a great way to help the channel. But use the link below. We are trying to work on a deal with Ryan and the team over there to get you guys some sort of discount. We just can't seem to break through. We, so here you do. Hit, hit them up. Tell them that we continue to try to get that from them. So let's do it. All right. Top price gainers uh, in the last 24 hours, of course, the seller token. Uh, not a big project that I'm uh, a big fan of, but Cody is one that I'm a big fan of. And I'll talk to you about why. That one's definitely had a very nice run up. And you can kind of see the very bullish zoom in on, on Cody right there at 91 on its daily sentiment. So a crazy score on Cody. And it is a project that I have invested into just here recently. And there are some reasons why. And I think if you watched our altcoin video, if you didn't watch it, you need to go check that one out. The most recent altcoin video that we talked about in October, what to look for, what, forward, what projects to watch. I talk a little bit about Cody and why that is important as well. Let's look at the others on here. CRO, of course, on here. And of course, BAT and Cello, which we have had here on the show. Uh, they are hot on Twitter right now. Sometimes these are good projects to keep your eye on on the left-hand side right here, hottest on Twitter. And then over here, of course, these are actual performance numbers. And of course, if you have not invested in uh, XTZ, Tezos, you've got to take a look at that one. And of course, track is another one that I'm interested in as well. So there's some there's some cool projects that are happening out there and some things I think that continue to surprise me overall. Ooh, we sneaked in a nice chart here. All right, so let's take a look at what I think is one of the million dollar portfolios that you need to be putting together in your arsenal of crypto investing. And these again, these are market movers, so Best thing we can do is we're going to give you some data. We're going to give you a little feedback. We're going to do some research for you. We'll drive some of our own proprietary data and give you hopefully a direction to go out and do your own research and kind of make your own decisions because we are not going to make them for you. It's not investment advice, but hopefully it gets you in the going in the right direction. This is my portfolio, and I want to kind of look at where I was looking at Tezos. And right here is our Tezos. Let me get my ruler. 
and kind of show you where this one has moved up to, if I can get it to give me a, a performance right here. Let's move that one down a little bit, and just retrace it. All right, so Tezos is one that I invested in somewhat late, I feel like, because this was a June investment, and looking right where Tezos is right now, we can kind of see this one holding in at right about there, 190%. So that one locks in, 190% on this one. So this is one of those projects, again, that has had some both ups and downs. You can kind of see the movement right here where it had dropped down to around $3.80, but it had had this massive bounce back where it's hovering in right now in the 7 to $8 range. Again, I'm going to hold Tezos. I do still see it's got some closeness, but I'm a little bit on the fence here. So what I'm going to do with Tezos is I'm going to take some profits on this one. And the idea is I'm going to leave my original investment in. I'm going to drop some profits out of Tezos, but I'm going to still hold this project because I do like the project and I think where it's going. So let's jump over to my other one, which of course is Arweave. Again, this was a project that I jumped into a little bit later, and this was July uh, 10th right there. So let me get my ruler here. We're going to show you some numbers. And July. There we go. Right there. Let's go here and run that up here to where it is now because it's had a little bit of a fall off right there. And a little over, I'm going to put that at, uh, actually, let me do that one again here so we can get an accurate number for you. July 10. And this is, that's the only thing. On some of these rules, they don't, it doesn't hold where you actually have the chart. So I'm going to juice this to there. And there we go. So right at 399%. This one, of course, has flown up the charts and continues to do some great things. We just dropped a video, or going to drop a video, about our weave uh, from a project analysis side. So make sure and tune into that video because it gets into the project itself. I won't bore you with all those details. It is an investment that I like long term, and it's one that I'm going to try to hold through. I do see some movement happening right now with Arweave, and there's some very good sentiment action with Arweave. So we could see this thing jump back up to the $70 mark, which is really where I would go ahead and take some profits. Again, these are altcoins that you should be taking profits on over a period of time. Now, I don't know what your ladder in or your ladder out strategy is. I'll tell you what mine is in terms of where do you ladder in on a project and especially something like a Solana, which is a hard one to catch. It's like, you know, my, my friend over at Invest Angeles talks about, you know, catching a falling knife. That's a good example of Solana. When you, where do you jump in? And if you bought in at Solana at anywhere around the 130 under this past dip, that's a good example of where you could have done a great entry. Hopefully some of you were able to attack this recent, you know, downslide and really go in at some entry points and get some of these altcoins because there were some excellent, excellent sales for what was happening out there. I also want to jump to Avalanche. Now, Avalanche, I feel like we had we had a little bit of a, and I want to tell you guys something. And this is this is something that I'm not, we're not going to hold your hand, but we're definitely going to show you in advance. If you're following this channel, if you're listening, if you're catching our videos as much as possible. We kind of forecast and give a little bit of a leading indicator on projects that we have discovered something we really like. Usually we'll have the CEO on, the CEOs will come on and we will get more information to dive in deeper. But by then we've already done the research, we've already done the lead up and we've already pulled our proprietary data from Rever Labs to kind of pull against it. That's what makes us go out and get a CEO on the show. And that was the situation with Avalanche and we jumped into this project on June the 4th. So let me get, get a number here, right there, June 4th. All right, and June 4th to where Avalanche is right now, another really massive performance at 319% uh, in value that we've increased on Avalanche in our portfolio from June 4th. And you can kind of see right here this low dip. This probably got a lot of people nervous and thought, hey, this thing's just not moving. And I know a lot of YouTubers and, and crypto analysts have looked at Avalanche in the past and said, you know, it just wasn't that interesting of a project. We thought differently in the early stages when we, and if you go back and look at our videos, look at the first time we interviewed John Wu. Just go search Avalanche, Paul Baron Network. 
You'll figure it out. You'll start to see the little Hansel and Gretel breadcrumbs that we're leaving for you guys. We're not going to give you these in advance because obviously we don't you know, front run these things. But the point is, is that there's a reason for our madness in how we do this and how we bring projects both on the technology side, blockchain side, all those things is really leaning into this uh, going forward. So the other one that I want to talk about is Algorand. And I know you guys are like, Paul, you're always talking about Algorand this and Algorand that. You know, you just can't face it down. Algorand is one of those projects that is still a sleeper. It's still a sleeper. So it's one of those that I think has a lot more upside. This is one of, very similar to Ethereum to me in terms of my hold strategy. Uh, and I want to jump back to Avalanche here in a second about when we would sell and when we might take some profits. So here's my target price for Avalanche. You guys are going to get a little crazy on this. I think this is going to $100. So the potential for Avalanche is still a little bit there, but I do think that a few things have to happen. I think Avalanche is on the, the potential edge of, of doing something very interesting. So I want you to watch the news very closely on what Avalanche is doing in terms of their money moves because they're putting a lot of dots together in their puzzle and they're making some moves. Can this shoot up and get another shot? And you maybe this is the front end of like what Solana was doing, you know, 30 days ago. I want you to think about that. So where would I exit on Avalanche? I've got an exit point coming up right now at $80. It's probably going to happen in the next, maybe the next 24 hours. It'll hit 80. I've got an exit point right there of taking some of those profits off and moving that in. And we'll talk about a little bit more where that's going to go here in the video in a minute. But Going over to back to Algorand now, and, and the point behind what Silvio and his team and just Algorand in general are trying to do, again, we've had Algorand on the show a couple of times for a reason. The reasons are very clear. This is a very clean or organized company in terms of one, from the clean side, they kind of took advantage of what was happening in China. And also zero, I think it is, what do they call it? Net uh, negative, uh, yeah, zero negative or something like that that is in reference to how clean this blockchain is in terms of sustainability, which is a big factor. And also, I think in general, just their project is super fast. It's got great technicals. And the fundamentals of just the tokenomics are very, very sound with where Algorand is rolling. I want to jump back into this one because this one was a May. And this one we actually got in right there, May 29. Let's take a look at May 29 and give you guys kind of a run up of where that one holds. And boom, May 29. So let's take that one up to where it is now because it's softened a little bit right here at 139% in terms of our gains. We probably should have tooken, taken a little bit off of the plate uh, when Algorand, of course, hit that 255 mark. Probably should have taken a little profits there and pocketed that and looked for another re-entry point, which would have been right there at about the dollar fifty during this splash crash that we ex experienced. Would have been a great re-entry point on this one. And I know we've got a lot of comments coming in. We're definitely going to get to those for you guys. Um, there's so much to talk about here because it, it just these are just a few of the projects that we're running here within the network and of course within my own portfolio. And one thing that I am going to share, and we're going to do this in the Diamond Circle, which is going to start, we actually have a date now, October 7th, is our go live date for the Diamond Circle. You'll be able to get links coming in our videos. And we're going to, one of the first videos we're going to drop is my full investment portfolio from 100K to 1 million and how we did it and what it means for you if you're out there trying to put something like this together. Hopefully we can get this done before the, uh, the run up on Bitcoin comes because it's, I think it will help you guys out. So we wanted to drop this video to at least get you started on some projects. I want to jump over to AVAX just to show you the chart here and kind of where we were coming from because this is something that we had been looking at very early on. This was kind of the uprise that we had saw from uh, Avalanche. This was back in August. They had the 56, uh, really good sentiment score, uh, 51. That was the first time we'd seen Avalanche clip over the 50 mark in sentiment. That usually starts a little bit of a, um, a cascading effect with some of these projects because amplification starts to get the noise 
into the social sphere, crypto Twitter and all of those applications, TikTok, YouTube, et cetera, the noise starts and we do usually start to see a little bit of action. Now this was a low amplification score, so that usually indicates what we experience, which is a little bit of sideways action. Sentiment right here came in actually a little bit stronger when we saw this drop, we pulled that sentiment score getting a 61.29, way up from this score right here, which was almost uh, about three or four weeks later. We got this one on September the 6th. Sentiment score was 61.29, but this is where it got magical for Avalanche, and that was when Amplification did the flip-flop, and we saw Avalanche make its run, and it went to 63. We tracked it up as far as we could. We weren't right with it the entire way because it actually busted out of our bubble and our tracking of where the amplification was going. And of course, it's just continued on up the rail. We're gonna look at another sentiment data set on this period right here to kind of look and see how far we think this might be able to go because you are hovering around the $75 mark and you've got that 70 and I just can't quite get to that $80 price point of where Avalanche, even though I do believe this is one that's gonna move. Another one that I wanna to jump to is Saul and really kind of just tooting our own horn and what we've been able to identify is the sentiment moves. Of course, way back here, we saw a sentiment bubble back in uh, late August, moving again, a sentiment flip or an amplification flip, 75.66. We see a massive run up, a little bit of a offside. I still think this was a little manipulation right here, which is this whole period right here before we saw a little bit of the slide and also amplification falling on Sol. This was back when we started to see some of the news rumbling on what happened on Solana, which caused this downward move. And then we of course saw the opportunity to get some dips right here, which happened during this last one. So we've been pretty much very close to the range for Solana. And I like this project and we'll continue to ride this one. I do like this. Anything at the 140 and below is a definite buy yeah, but if you are in it right now, you're hovering right around the 149, it's probably gonna crack into 160, I think, by the weekend. Lots happening on Solana. And of course, my other favorite one to look at here is, uh, of course, Cardano. Now, Cardano, very interesting project. It's one of the, is a little lackluster in its release of Purple and the Alonzo uh, update. And I'm still on the fence with this because I exited, I did something with Cardano that was a little different. I exited my entire bag when Cardano, when I saw Cardano take that little bit of that dip, I was out right there around the $3 mark, a little under, it was like actually around 280. I dumped and then I was looking for another entry point. And of course, Cardano got down to $1.87. And in my video that we talked about this is look for a 150 to 180 mark because I felt like we were going to see it. And sure enough, with the scenario that we saw with a little bit of the flash crash, it did hit it. Now, can and will it recover? Yes, I think it's going to. Obviously, it's holding in right now at a good, uh, really a good resistance level at two, around 230 which I think is gonna come back up here. If you look at where Cardano has been sl sliding in, the 278 is the next level. And they're really that all time high, which is I think an opportunity to still be able to make it at the $3.10 or yeah, $3.10 level. I wanna jump into Market Cipher a little bit. And I wanna show you guys something here that you should be watching. If you're not using Market Cipher, this is one that you should be looking at. The momentum waves, of course, are starting to look a little bit strong right here. And we do these um, analysis. We're gonna do these market cipher analysis for you. We've got a great new analyst, Evan Aldo, who's coming in and working with us in the studio. And we're gonna drop a lot more analysis on market cipher. But if you'll notice right here, we're starting to see negative money flow. Of course, that's what we've seen right here, pretty much in this little bit of a lull. And you see this little section right here starting to rise out. We're looking for some key indicators that will start to help Cardano start to move. The key here is I think we're gonna see positive money flow pretty soon, which means that we're right there at that 226. The next level of resistance is right there at $3.09. If we can break through, I think this area right here and solidly get past it, then I think we have an opportunity to maybe see Cardano actually get some action right here, which would be in the latter half of September, 
where we're running right here around the 26th, maybe out here to the 28th. We are going to run a sentiment analysis on that as well. And of course, that's the big one for the day. All right, so let's get to some questions. Hopefully you guys have dropped in uh, some great, uh, yeah, some great stuff in here. We've got a ton of them. Um, yeah, let's take a few here. Okay, let's talk about that. Brian, I'm going to send that over to the team. So Brian, uh, don't discount how strong Cardano community is despite doubts of the project. I think that's a very good point, Brian in what you're talking about here, and that is that the Cardano cult, as I call them, is definitely very strong. If I even mention something that I am, you know, bearish on Cardano, I think that, you know, the wizards of, of Charles Hoskinson himself are released upon the tech path community, and we try to get away from that. So uh, I do agree with you. Cardano cult, very strong. The force is strong in that one for sure. Chill money, uh, scale network, don't know much about that one. Can't really go there. Uh, I like that one. Um, I like Bob Hayes. Thor Mainnet. Okay, interesting. Thor Mainnet, definitely something that you guys should be keeping your eye on. There are some situations, I think, that are coming within Thor, and it's one that I'm still on the fence about, of whether or not this project has the potential to be a long-term. But it could be one of those, you know, you know, you kind of, it's like those one night stands. I think that's what Rand calls them over on Crypto Banner. It's one night stands, one night stands. Yeah, I like those. All right, let's take a look at others in here. Uh, okay, any thoughts on Cody? Let's go with Crypto Fanatic right here. We'll put you up there, hopefully. Viewer questions, Crypto Fanatic, are we getting him? Yeah, maybe. All right, so Crypto Fanatic, I've got you right here. Any thoughts on Cody? If you watch, again, if you watch the video on the altcoins, you got to check it out because it's, it's just seeded with lots of interesting information. But there is a very key partnership that is happening between Cody and Cardano. When that occurs, and I have a feeling that they're going to seal the deal and kind of get this thing all lined out at this upcoming Cardano event that's coming very soon. I don't know when the date is on it, but just search the Cardano event. You'll be able to find it. It's coming up very soon, and if I'm a Cardano holder, I'm sure you guys are, I'm waiting for that event right now because I've done my re-entry into Cardano. I got a new spot to purchase in. Now I'm looking at this next opportunity to do an exit on Cardano, and that is one that is definitely... Um, all right, so let's talk about uh, Prasanna Krishnan. Prasanna, Prasanna Krishnan. He wants to talk about XRP and kind of where XRP is going. The XRP project is in a very interesting space right now. The big thing, and we're gonna drop a video on this, actually, you'll probably have it before the weekend, is we have some very interesting data on XRP. Remember, we've been studying XRP for quite some time, so we've got a lot of historical analysis on it, both from a sentiment standpoint, an amplification standpoint, and then a technical analysis standpoint. Again, XRP was one of those that took a beating in this slide, and it was a great opportunity to dollar cost average in if you're already an XRP holder, or maybe make your first entry point on um, getting into XRP. And for some of you, you get that over on Uphold. Uh, the way I get to it is I grab it on PoundX. I usually transfer some Tether into PoundX and uh, jump over there and, and get it from there. PoundX is a bot trading platform. If you guys haven't checked it out, probably should check it out because there are some bot trading platforms out there that are pretty pretty efficient. And uh, we're probably going to do a bot video for you guys soon. There's, there's two or three companies that are starting to jockey for uh, what I think is first position in the bot trading. And when, when crypto gets a little bit stale, which it will once we go into the bear market. Bot trading may be a safe haven for some of you in terms of how you want to move forward. I'm going to get some other ones in here. Uh, Bob Hayes, okay, was wondering if you heard about the end and your thoughts on Orion protocol. Uh, about a small moon bag. Okay, I like Orion. Orion is a project that we are going to do uh, a very interesting video on. I don't want to tell you too much about this one, Bob, but we have some insider, I won't say insider information. We have some research that we've done on Orion that really starts to point to that project doing some pretty cool things. So some cool stuff over there. All right, let's see what we are doing here. Uh, can I buy Arweave, uh, US and Binance? You can't buy Arweave unless you've used outside USVPN. You're right. Um, Arweave is tough to get to. 
It is doable. I won't go into the details of how you shy guys can do it, but there are places where you can get this out there on where you're going. All right, what else do we have? Harmony, yes, Joe, Jose Campos. Um, you know, you're right. Let me send, let's see if I can send this one over. We're having difficulties over there on our, on our team. Uh, Jose, Harmony One is what you're gonna get. We're going to do the Harmony video for sure. Not, not even an if, it's gonna happen. The key here is the amount of people that we're getting, you know, one, the responses from you guys, which is fantastic. Uh, and thank you so much, because I'm getting great leads on Twitter. We're getting hookups with developer leads. We're getting hookups with CEOs. It's really bringing in a lot of the community here in the Diamond Circle and kind of the overarching Diamond Circle as it extends beyond YouTube here. That's, a, that's one that we definitely want to get into and, uh, and dive deep. So we are going to get to it. I promise you it's not going to, it's not going to get uh, pushed under the rug. We'll probably try to get to it next week. So Harmony coming to you guys for sure. And lots more coming in here. Man, just so many of these guys still. Let's talk about Dapper Diners by Dapper Dinos by Gary V is flying and we got a floor price uh, 0.35 to 0.08 ETH. Uh, that's an interesting from Nino Alves. Let's see if we can send that one up. Looks like our, our vMix is not sending up our viewer questions very well there. But the point is Nino. All right, Gary V, we've talked about him on the show here before. Anything that Gary V does right now in the NFT space, at least in the near future, I am all in on. Because one, Gary understands what's happening in NFTs. And he's not going to waste any time because he's such a driven individual, trust me, he's not on a project unless he is all in on it and he thinks it's got a potential for an opportunity to really show some upside here. So if you're going after anything with Gary Vee right now, he's someone I would bet on in the NFT space. Interestingly enough, within the Diamond Circle, we're gonna do some cool things within that. Now it's gonna be a free membership for you, so you guys will get member-only content over there but we're actually gonna have some courses over there that you'll be able to get into. And we've got a great uh, research team and an analyst team that has been building together a, a whole slew of courses, NFT, just the whole NFT ecosystem, how to get into it, how to really uh, start doing some really interesting investing in NFTs and also NFT gamings or gaming uh, will be part of that course and it's coming uh, very soon. We'll probably have by the end of October you'll have a handful of courses that you'll be able to get to in the Diamond Circle. Just by being a member of the Diamond Circle, you'll be getting a pretty big discount on those courses and uh, taking it into the next level. Let's go into some other stuff. Uh, all right, some of these are in here uh, that I've seen and we've, we've talked about, and you know, I'm seeing more and more people asking about Quant. Tyler Christie asking about Quant, again, it's one of those projects I just don't get around enough. I know and I've read about it and had a chance to kind of review it. It's been in our list before. It's actually cracked into my own top 100. When we look at kind of putting metrics together through sentiment analysis, Quant is one that we're kind of looking at. I wonder what Quant's, I wanna just, we'll see if we can pull that up in our coins. Hang on one second here and let's see what we've got on Quant and all right, Quant is, let's see where it's holding on the seven day. So usually this is the first indicator I'll look at with Trade the Chain before we pull a little bit of an analysis. It's a little bit soft right now. There may be some things though that are driving this. Uh, so I would have to see one, where the news, because this is one of those projects I feel goes with the flow of, of media and news. Um, but it's social data, it looks a little soft right now, and it is starting to move though a little bit, but you'll notice here, uh, daily sentiment is still hovering on trade the chain at 4170. Until a, a, a coin gets past that 50 mark, which is very important on the sentiment scale, that's when you're in positive sentiment zone. Until you get past that, you really just have to watch these things. And again, click the link below, jump on trade the chain. Uh, it's a great service, it's, you know, it's not, it's not inexpensive, I don't know, I mean, it's like 100 bucks a month, so it's a project, I mean, it's a service that you guys, if you're using, doing a lot of trading, it's a good 
starting indicator to get your research going. So that's another one that you can kind of go with. Synthetics, oh, Alan Martinez. This is a great one. Uh, synthetics is one of those projects that is on our list. We have it on the list. It is close to coming out, so we're definitely going to get that for you, Alex. Uh, we'll jump to that one. Uh, but synthetics right now in my short term is, I do believe this is a project I would, I would look at very hard. Whether or not I would go in uh, in a big bag would be questionable on synthetics right now, but I like it as a potential for an opportunity of where you might want to look at maybe building out some of your altcoins and projects uh, in going in that direction. So good stuff there. We'll see what else we have here before we get going. Uh, Tron's always been on the list. It just doesn't make it into the top 100. Ross B, Kava is another one that's been on our list, just has not made it into our top 100 analysis. Let me look at where Kava is, and I'll kind of give you, kind of give you a little bit on Kava IO. Seven day is holding, uh, again, a little bit soft right here on these. Not a lot of movement, but we did see the downtrend, of course, during this fall off. But it might have been a good time to buy if you are a big believer in Kava. It's definitely a decent market cap, holding at a half a billion right there, or yep, yeah, right at uh, 526 million. Not a super expensive project, so that's not too bad. Let's see what else we have here. And it looks like we're about to wrap them up. Uh, what are your thoughts on ICP? All right, so ICP, this is coming from Proverbs 1711. Uh, not a heavily religious man, so I don't know what that means, but I'm sure you guys are going to tell me in the comments. But uh, let's talk about ICP. ICP. So we've had, uh, <laughs> we've had them on the show. This was an interesting episode. You guys should check it out, okay? Check it out because there's something that's happening with ICP. One, first of all, if you are a believer in the project, in what they mean, then it's something that you can get behind because the thought and the idea of what ICP is trying to do, which is really recreate the internet, is very, very, it's very gallant. It's, it's, a, it's very uh, altruistic. It, it's one of those things that people, it's just good for, I think, the environment and what's happening in blockchain. The challenge I have with ICP, and I was an early investor, and I lost some money on ICP. I won't lie to you. It's just I, you, we don't win on every project. You know, some of them get, we, and I wouldn't call it a rug pull, but we definitely lost some money. And the situation that I have always said, including on the uh, token analysis video that we did at the time, was that I, ICP is too early. This is too early of a project for what they're trying to do. Now, does it need to stick around for a while like an XRP before it could become a dominant project and just absolutely blow off the top? Yeah, that's when this is one of those that I don't think it's going anywhere. And there's uh, Dominic is doing, you know, he's he's making all the moves to try to pull this off. So I do believe that at least from a technical standpoint that it can get done. The question is when. That's going to be the real question that I want to jump to. Okay, Casino Coin. David, I, uh, Julie, I do not know a lot about this project. I can just tell you right now. That one is one I do not have a lot of information on, but I'm going to look at it. We'll see if it's, uh, it's something that I, maybe we should look at a little closer. And let's see here. Anything else? And again, more, more men. The, uh, the, the H&T guys are out in force today. Uh, oh, there's Graph. All right. We've done a video on Graph, Tyler. So Tyler Fitzpatrick, a uh, good one. Yep. Graph is one that we like. It's a project that I continue to, I haven't invested in it. I will say that. And it's one that I've continued to look at. It's always in the round table uh, for the Diamond Circle. When we, when our group of investors go out and we kind of put, everybody pools their ideas, their research, and maybe in some cases, some of their, you know, connections on where we can get some of our direction of where this is going. And of course, pulling things like that. But Graph is one that always is at the table. Uh, we need to dive into that project a little deeper, I think, to really kind of get some ideas of where it's going. Again, as a reminder, when you guys are here, the Diamond Circle is gonna live over on paulbarronnetwork.com. Now, when you go to paulbarronnetwork.com right now, you're gonna see a, a, a website that we created when we launched TechPath and kind of got it going. The key here, remember, TechPath lives under uh, PBN, Paul Baron Network, and then Paul Baron Network actually lives under uh, a production house, our company that I own, 
and run called Reverend Networks. And the concept behind it is you'll be able to get into Paul Barron Network in the new format. That's where the Diamond Circle will live. It's where the course product will live. It's where a lot of our member-only content will live, including the continuation of this video, which is going from 100K to a million in your portfolio, or 10,000 to 100,000, or 1,000 to 10,000, whatever it might be. These are the projects, and I'm gonna reveal all in there on all the entire portfolio, how it's done for me, when I entered, where I'm gonna exit, all those kind of things. So we're definitely gonna get into those. And of course, Cosmos, yes, Rabello. We're gonna get, uh, Cosmos is one that we've done uh, and actually covered. I love Cosmos as a project. Definitely, I'm just trying to go down the list here and make sure we've got um, XYO, Austin, LeBounty. Uh, we just had that one come up the other day in terms of our research team to talk about that one and take a look a little bit deeper. Have not done any tokenomics on that to really understand, again, where it's going. And, and remember, when we're doing these analysis, we have like our top 50 projects that we do constant analysis on. We're always dipping into the project, doing more analysis, more analysis, et cetera. Mainly so we can just drop in and on the fly give you an update on an XRP or give you an update on something like a, um, well, let's take a Cardano, good example, you know, Cardano's. Those are the kind of projects that we'll do. Then we have the outliers like Arweave and some of the NFT projects that we're looking at that we're diving into now. We're trying to build that next layer of 50 projects that we can put into our research constantly and be able to, at a minute's notice, be able to maybe just drop a chart for you and say, hey, let's take a look at where ADA is and you know, go back and look at sentiment back here in this t time frame, like what we were looking at right here when ADA was running right here and we were looking at, at uh, Cardano. That's, that's the kind of stuff that we'll do on an ongoing basis for you. Constellation Dag, Yanni, um, okay, since you said please, and you put like 5,000 E's in there and S's. Uh, I'll look at that one for you. I'll look at that one again. It's been on, it's been on the list before. We've seen Constellation and it's interesting to me. I always get intrigued by some of these projects, but not all of them would I say are holders. And this is one that I would say is kind of, in my opinion, is still a little bit on the teeter totter for that. Uh, <laughs> Go Shiba. Yeah, we've had a lot of that. And Ave. Yep. Uh, great. I was an early investor in Ave, but I took some profits on Ave about three months ago. So that one's out of here. Uh, again, STMX. Uh, Bob Hayes. Man, you just keep dropping in, Bob. Um, don't have. That's a good one, Bob, because that one is. I just found out a little bit about that project. It's a brand new one on my radar. So I'm definitely looking at that one uh, for sure. And I like it. I'm surprised no one is talking about the, <laughs> the sleeping giant. <laughs> and that is Doge, of course. We are a big fan of Doge, actually. Uh, I mean, if anything, the videos do amazing. And we've actually pulled quite a bit of data. There, that's one of the tokens that we keep on the run. Let's see where uh, Doge is setting the last time that we did a run up on Doge. Yeah, maybe we pulled it. Yeah, it's pulled off of the off of the chart list right now, but we do keep it. Chainlink I hold, I'm a big, big fan of Chainlink. So I hold that one. Even though it's not performing well right now, do not let it go, it's ready for a run. That is one I like that. Marco Velez coming in from the interwebs here. That's a good one as well. OMI is ready. I would have to agree with that portfolio. OMI might be on the verge of taking off. So that's another one that I like. Just like DOT, if you look at Polkadot and what's happening over there, which by the way, we have some big news coming and I won't say what it is, but it's about Polkadot. And it's gonna give you guys another insight to maybe what's going on within the DOT ecosystem. Remember, if you're not studying Polkadot, Kusama, the parachain, get your homework out. You need to really take a look at that. Much like the ecosystem of Solana, Polkadot has a very efficient structure in which they're operating their blockchain and how they're onboarding new projects these parachains are really, really important to, I think, the ecosystem polka dot. So it's going to be a big one uh, to definitely go there. We're going to start wrapping up here in a minute because I, um, I got to run and pick up the kids, you know? That's what we do. We're crypto by day, daddy by night. <laughs> anyway, more stuff is coming and a ton of new content is flushing out. If you have not realized, we have a ton of new hosts on the network.
Lisa Francoeur. She's doing a fantastic job. I love all you guys' comments, but I would ask you to do one thing, and that is always be a gentleman when you're dealing with any woman. Always be a gentleman. The other thing is Alex is now on board. He's been doing a fantastic job on his research. He's going to be doing more content with us as well. And, of course, Evan Aldo is an absolute ninja when it comes to market cipher. So if you are a market cipher whiz, or if maybe you're just getting into market cipher for the first time um, and you haven't jumped in, we're going to have a, a, a a good affiliate link for that soon with a nice discount. So be on the lookout for that one. And there is another market cipher indice product that I'm researching right now that could be a very interesting product for you if you're using TradingView on an ongoing basis and using indices like market cipher. So be on the watch out, watch out for that one, of course. Now, if you are listening into this post live, Maybe you're over on the podcast and you're saying, hey, man, I missed a great live session uh, with TechPath. And the number one thing you can do is jump over here to the YouTube channel. Just subscribe to the channel and like a couple of videos. And it's going to start sending you some good uh, updates on when we do these lives. And also put us in your feed and in the YouTube algorithm for when we come out with new content, hopefully giving you guys a first look at some of these projects to get you going on your investment strategy and on your investment journey out there in the technology space, because that's what it's all about. That's what I believe in, is that technology will save the planet in the future. All right, if you guys have another idea and the, the stuff keeps coming in, always drop it in the comments below. We'll try to get to as many as we can. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.